Hello there, everybody! I'm Mr. Ginpai, and welcome to a new Let's Play. Today, we're taking on another one of the games that I did way back whenever I started making Let's Plays. A redo of my second Let's Play, Mega Man 10. I figured, you know, if I ended my YouTube channel with Mega Man 4, my first Let's Play, it makes sense to start up the official first Vidme exclusive Let's Play with Mega Man 10, my second Let's Play. So, here we go, we have an intro sequence. Once upon a time, I would have skipped this intro sequence. It actually saved us a lot of time, because <laughs> despite Mega Man games being known for having something of a lack of plot, at least as far as the classic series is concerned, this game, well, its intro cutscene actually goes on for quite a while. But it is one of the relatively more complex intro scenes, so I guess that makes sense. But, uh, yeah, there's this big old virus going around, infecting robots, and being problematic. And the text actually scrolls really slowly, and I don't think there's any way to speed it up without skipping the intro cutscene altogether. Which, uh, you know, that's, that's the ma major reason why, uh, you got such a big problem there. As far as, uh, the intro lasting a while. But, uh, yeah, here we find a world where, uh, People are really dependent on robots. Like, seriously. They are, they are having an issue doing much of anything without their robots to help. No wonder they need Mega Man to save the day all the time. It is kind of strange, though, how robots have become so incredibly integrated in the lives of regular individuals to this degree. And yet, apparently, Mega Man is the only robot that can actually go out there and fight robot masters whenever the scenario calls for it. Or maybe he's the only one willing to. And Mega Man just catches that Wily Saucer! We don't generally see it, but, I mean, Mega Man probably ha does have some degree of super strength. But of course, he typically shoots things down, which is, you know, it makes sense. It's probably more effective in the long run. Yes, even Dr. Wily is inconvenienced by robots that don't obey his orders. In fact, uh, considering that he pretty much exclusively uses robots to do what he needs to do, I'd imagine it would affect him to almost 100% capacity. And yep, Mega Man volunteers to stop the robots! And who could that be? It's Proto Man! And here we see one of the major elements that Mega Man 10 brought to the table. Proto Man as a playable character from the start of the game. Mega Man 9 also had him as a playable character, but you had to download him. But here, he, he's just there. That said, this game does have a downloadable protagonist. It's Baze, as you can see over there, off to the right. Once you download him, he becomes a part of the title screen. And indeed, we can see Mega Man here. We can see Proto Man here with all of his abilities, his charge shot, his uh, shield whenever he jumps, and his slide. Although he does take more damage and knockback than Mega Man does. And then we see Bass, able to aim his shots in a variety of directions. He has a dash that can help him move a little bit faster. Although, notably, uh, his double jump from Mega Man and Bass doesn't, doesn't appear. And he can't fire through walls. But, for this playthrough, I'm going to be stick with Mega Man. We also have three difficulties here. Normal, Hard, and Easy. But, I'm going to be doing the default method of play, so I'm going to be playing normal mode. And here we have our big old group of robot masters. Eight of them. Number, uh, like, 71 through 80 or... No, it would be 72 through 80 or something, I believe. Well, I'm going to be starting with the first, numerically, Blade Man. Blade Man takes the concept of Be the Sword to its logical extreme and is basically just a bunch of swords mashed together, and I love it. 
But uh, yeah, hey, check this out. Blade Man is living in the castle. And here we have these axe enemies, which are surprisingly annoying. They have a simple flight pattern of, you know, going up and down. But uh, they take three hits and do their constant movement, they can be a little bit annoying to hit. In fact, that's kind of the theme of Blade Man's stage, is that things in this level tend to be rather difficult to hit. Like these spider enemies, that are rather difficult to hit. They'll uh, storm the ceiling, and uh, whenever they get to your horizontal position, they'll drop down. And once they drop down... Oh, okay. They, uh, they start jumping around like crazy. You'll also see that I have three special weapons from the very beginning of the game. This is because of the three download stages that uh, are the Mega Man killers. You get weapons for them and Mega Man permanently obtains them. But I won't really be using them in this playthrough. I've done streams and stuff where I've used them before, so I mean, you could always go look for those. They are generally very useful though. All right, let's just grab that little health ball and go into a mini-boss. Yep, we're starting out and already we got a mini-boss. So this castle has three eyes and uh, you gotta destroy each of the eyes. It's pretty simple. You really want to destroy the two tower eyes before destroying the center set. Because uh, if you destroy the center set, then it becomes very difficult to tell whenever the platforms will be exiting and become available for you to jump on. Otherwise, right now, it's very easy to tell when that'll happen. And of course, you're basically going to need those if you want to hit the towers. Unless you have, like, a special weapon, or maybe you could use Rush if you really wanted to. Either way, now that the towers are destroyed, it's going to be easy to take out this center set of eyes. And there we go! It has a nice little white flag, and the explosions ensue! A castle within a castle. Now we've got some Inception going. Alright. Uh, yeah, the spider guy. I'm just gonna leave. Just gonna leave. Alright, there we go. You can generally kind of manipulate the scenario there where things are constantly jumping over you on the stairwell. Kind of sneak by them quite a bit. You can also, uh, switch your weapons without going to the pause screen. You just scroll through them. Although, because I'm playing on the Wii version, that means that I can only scroll in one direction. Whereas, if I was using an Xbox 360 controller, or a PlayStation controller, or even the Pro controller for the Wii, uh, I would be able to use the, you know, two triggers to scroll in two directions. Rather than just using the Wiimote's B button to scroll through one. I don't have a classic controller, though, so I can't do that. I also only have the Wii version, so... I can only play the Wii version, obviously. <laughs> Can't play a version I don't have! Who would have guessed? Well, okay there. These enemies, these little floating head enemies, whenever you get on the same vertical position as them, they shoot. Alright. And now we have a very badly positioned axe, posi axe enemy. Because, uh, yeah, whenever he goes up, you can just shoot him. And now, Blade Man himself. Blade Man, despite his threatening appearance, is pretty easy, actually. He's gonna latch onto the wall, and then you wanna go run up to the other side, and then you just wanna go over to the other side, and then, uh, yeah, just keep doing this. Blade Man does have an ability where he'll jump off the wall and lunge directly at you, but he only does this if you fail to shoot him whenever he's on the wall. And then he'll go straight back onto the wall again anyway, so it's not exactly that difficult to handle. Yeah, one of the most pattern-based robot masters in this game. He really presents no threat once you know what you're doing. Even on harder difficulties, you know, hard mode, uh, his triple blade gets upgraded to like five blades instead of three. But even then, this still works. He does get a new attack where once he lunges onto you onto the ground, he'll try to like stab you with his head blade by headbutting into you. But that's still very easy to avoid. There's really just nothing going on here. So, yep, on easy mode, he only gets two blades to throw at you. But even then, the battle doesn't really change at all. He just has less stuff to throw at you. I guess he's also a bit slower, too. Oh, 
overall, the difficulty modes just really don't change this battle much. And what can I say? There's just not much there to change. As cool as Blade Man looks, he's just not that hard. So, from Blade Man, we get the Triple Blade. It's basically your metal blade of the game. It has a really good arc, it can uh, pierce through enemies to hit multiple foes in one shot, it's generally quite powerful. It's a good weapon. Although notably, I don't tend to use it that much whenever I have other special weapons to fall back on. So let's go to Commando Man now. Aw oh, yeah. Commando Man is your big robot master of the game. Big and heavy, he'll do the whole sh screen shaking scenario and everything. And, uh, he's in the desert. And, uh, yeah, there we go. So, we have this scenario right here, where those little flying enemies will drop bombs to destroy, uh, the, the stuff on the ground. And I'm completely missing everything, much like how Blade Man was missing me not too long ago. There we go. Alright, so we have a split path here. We could go to the right, or we could go down. I prefer to go down. We had a nice little shield attacker here. Got a Met. Due to uh, the spread of the triple blade, we don't even need to get on the Met's level to attack it. And uh, there we go. There's another shield attacker down. Once again, don't even need to get on his level. The Commando Man level. Nope, he's not going to go out. I don't think the Mets actually leave their helmets whenever uh, they're in the sandstorm. Yeah, there we go. Oh, that's bad. I'm just going to stand here. Of course, the Triple Blade does make it a little bit easier to uh, hit the bomb enemies as they come out of the hole. Also, be careful because bomb enemies come out of the holes in this area. <laughs> and they can very easily knock you back into the pit. Even if you manage to shoot them down, it is possible for the explosion to still hit you and for you to go into the pit anyway. Oh, that was an unexpected dodge. How dare you dodge my projectiles? There we go, got some weapon ammo. I'm just using Triple Blade all over the place here because I can. It has a lot of ammo, so don't need to worry too much about it. Also, uh, here we have the big eye of the game. Notably, the way that they jump is actually quite pattern-based this time. If, uh, if you're on the ground whenever they jump, they'll do a small jump, and if you're in the air whenever they jump, they'll do the big jump. Oh, okay. That works, I guess. I am actually about to run out of triple blade here, so I should probably be a little bit careful. Come on, Matt. There you go. And now I'm out of it. So, guess I'll just use my regular weapon for a while. That said, I guess I haven't mentioned this yet, but uh, I do like to use the special weapons a lot whenever playing Mega Man games. I certainly respect the people that, you know, try to do buster-only runs and such, but that's just not me. Also, we got a real speed run section here. Beautiful. And uh, here's a badly posi positioned guy. There we go, manipulating his AI to make him jump higher so that I have more chances to hit him on every jump. And now it's time for Commando Man himself! Shaking the screen! Alright, so Commando Man, despite his intimidating nature, isn't at all that difficult. If you get up close to him, you can easily just constantly run underneath him, and then he won't really be able to do a whole lot to you at that point. Except try to shoot straight forward. He can do that sometimes. Honestly, you do want him to stay far away from the walls, because uh, if he manages to just shoot forward while you're right up next to a wall, the explosion can still hit you. And that's dangerous.
And so we get the second special weapon of the game. It's Commando Bomb! A really great weapon. You can change its direction midair twice, and whenever it hits a wall, it'll create a big explosion that does massive damage. Capitalizing on the explosion can be a tricky skill to master, but a very effective one if you get it down. Anyway, that's two Robot Masters down. I think that'll be it for this video. Next time, we're gonna take on Nitro Man. So I'll see you then.